Hi, this is the 8th part on consuming a REST API in Dart and Flutter. In this video, I'm going to show you how to serialize Dart objects into JSON and how to deserialize from JSON into Dart objects. So I have already shown you how to do that in one of the previous parts, but as you can see over here, we're doing it very manually. We are mapping every single property to a constructor and whatever, and that's just not the ideal way to go. The reason is because for every single model you create, you will need to write custom code and that's just redundant and boring and you will spend a lot of unnecessary time on doing it. But there is a great solution for this and that is a package called JSON Serializable. What JSON Serializable basically does is you put a couple of annotations, say what you need and how you need it and it basically generates all of this converting boilerplate code for you. So in order to use that package, we need to install it. So here it's one of the top packages in the Dart pub or whatever. And it's also developed by the Dart team. So it's a very solid package. It's a great package and it's frequently maintained. So let's go onto the page of the package. Go to the installing section. And let's just copy this thing. Let's go to our pubspec YAML file. And let's install our JSON serializable package. I'll just save the file and flutter pub get is going to automatically execute but if you're not using Visual Studio Code you will have to do it yourself in the terminal. Okay so the package is installed. So now let's see how to use this package. So first let's generate code for a node for listing model. So we need a couple of things. First we need to import the JSON annotation package. This is basically from the JSON serializable package and this will give us all the annotations and all the fancy stuff we need to actually use it. So let's import that. And now we need to annotate the whole node for listing class with a JSON serializable annotation. So let's just do that. And let me just put a space in here. And now we need to tell JSON serializable where our generated code is going to live. So uh, code generation in frameworks, I think in Android it works a lot better because I really don't think that you can see those files. But in Dart, you have to specifically specify where is the file going to be generated, what's its name going to be, and that type of stuff. And you can easily access it. And the way we're doing that is using part. So we just use part and then specify the name of the file where our generated code is going to rest. And now we're getting a red underline because that file does not exist yet. So we have this node for listing. .g means generated. .dart. So now we need to make our JSON serializable package basically generate this for us. So here we are in the terminal and this is specifically the command we're going to run. This command will basically go through the whole project and it will see which files request code generation and it will just generate all the code that it needs to generate. And that's kind of uh, how I understand it. I'm really not sure how it works in its entirety, but I'm trying my best to explain it to you. So let's run this command and let's see what happens. I'll open the explorer over here so we can see if the file gets generated or not. Okay, so we have an error that says could not find package build runner and that's what I forgot to do. We need to install the build runner package, which basically does the code generation, I believe. So let's go to our PubSpec YAML file, go down to dev dependencies and paste in the build runner. Now I'll just save the file and it will run flutter packages get, or actually flutter, yeah, flutter pub get, whatever. Okay, and now I'm going to go back to the terminal and I'm going to execute the same command again. Now what should happen is we should get a notelist.g.dart file over here generated and that file should contain code for converting to a JSON file and converting from a JSON file. Or basically uh, not to a JSON file but to a map. And that's what our HTTP package takes in a map and then it sends it off as a JSON. So let me execute this command now. Okay, and we got our file, note for listing.g.dart. Let's actually go to that file and see what's inside. So yeah, exactly what we kind of expected. So we have note listing from JSON where it takes in a map and then it converts it to a note for listing object. And we have also to JSON, which does the exact same thing, but reverse. It converts from a note for listing to a map. So that's neat. Now let's go back to our note for listing. And there is actually some manual work that we need to do for every model. 
but most of that is just going to be copying and pasting across models. So I can get rid of all of this boilerplate code now. And now we can just return note from JSON and then we put in our JSON. And that's all we have to do for every model. If we want to have from JSON, we just create a factory constructor and make it point to our generated function over here. So now let's do that for the note insert model as well. The note insert model just has two JSON, but it really doesn't matter since JSON serializable does us a favor by generating both of those and we can use whichever one we want. Actually, this is not note insert, but note manipulation, but I forgot to rename it, but it really doesn't matter. So first I'll import the JSON annotation package, then I will add the JSON serializable annotation, and then I'll add the part directive. Okay, now let me save the file, and now we need to go back to our terminal, and we should run our command again, but as you may notice, that is just a lot of redundant work, especially when you have a whole lot of models. So what we could do is actually not use the build command, but the watch command. And what the watch command will do is every time we save some of these files where we have any sort of code generation, the build runner is going to detect that and it's going to do the build by itself. So let's see how it does its magic. I'll just press enter and it created our note insert.g file. And basically we have exactly the same thing from our note for listing file. Let's just close this down and you should keep your terminal working while you're doing this so that the watch process doesn't get killed because it needs to be an active process so we can listen for all the new file changes. So let's close that down now. And again, I can remove the code I wrote and I can just say note manipulation to JSON. And we need to pass in an instance and the instance is going to be this. And this basically refers to the current object. Okay, and now let's go to our last model, which is note.dart. Now let me open the terminal right now so we can see the watch command in action. Let's do the same thing we've done for the previous two models. Add the JSON annotation package, add a part directive, and add a JSON serializable annotation. Okay, and now I'll save the files. And our build runner immediately detected what was going on and it created a note.g.dart file. And again, we can remove this redundant code and just say note from JSON. So yeah, that should be pretty much it. I'll now just run the app so we can make sure that it works properly. Okay, so here we have the app up and running and let's check if all of our actions work. So the first thing that we checked just by running the app is the note for listing model and we can see that it works since it was converted to the Dart object and properly displayed on our list of notes. So now let's go into a single note and yes, it fetched our note. And now we just have the note manipulation model. Let's just do that. Test ABC submit okay and test abc so our whole app basically works okay so that's it for this video i really hope you got something valuable from this and if you did please like the video and subscribe to the channel for more flutter content in the next video we're going to take a look at how to simplify creating these http services because this takes up too many lines and there is a way for us to really cram it down to like 10, 20 lines maybe and not like a hundred lines. So yeah, that's it for this video. I'll see you next time.